All right, what is this? Holy smokes. Whoa, <laughs> I just caught a master angler. Hello and welcome back to yet another ultralight rod video. Today's video is about the Daiwa Kage. I have been requested to do a video on this rod so many times and I'm finally getting around to it. Now this rod has high remarks. A lot of people talk really good about this. I've actually never talked to anyone that's used it and said they didn't like it. So um, I think you can probably get an idea of what I'm going to feel about this rod, but it's definitely a unique ultralight stick. So you know the drill. I am going to showcase this rod. I am going to fish with this rod and hopefully we catch some nice fish along the way. But then at the end of this video, I'll kind of talk about uh, some of the good things, some of the bad things, uh, whether or not it could be for you. So without further ado, let's start fishing. All right, we're on the board with a dinky bluegill. See you, buddy. Before I even get into this rod itself, the one thing that I definitely wanted to call out is something that I thought was really cool of Daiwa to do. This rod right here is actually only available in like traditional fishing retailers, like smaller mom and pop type shops. So I actually had to go to a local retailer in order to pick this up. So you can't find it online. You're not gonna find it at like Cabela's or Bass Pro. Um, it's really only in smaller fishing retailers, which I think, I just thought that was kind of neat. I've never really heard of any other companies doing something like that. Um, this is originally like a Japanese rod, but they brought it to the American market and basically said they're only gonna do business with certain retailers. I believe that's the same case for the Daiwa Kage Reel. Now today I have got this paired up with a Daiwa Procyon LT1000. I wanna say this reel is like a little over six ounces. It's not too heavy, um, but this rod actually pairs up extremely well with it. As far as balance goes, there you go right there. Um, I would say that this rod has got a pretty neutral balance with this reel right here. So I would definitely say that this rod is well balanced. I would say, you know, this is probably a rod built for a little bit higher end reel. And so you're gonna want to, um, go ahead and pair it up with something probably a little bit lighter. You're probably not gonna want to fish this with like a eight plus ounce reel. I think that would get a little bit butt heavy. Um, something in the six to seven ounce range is going to be pretty comfortable, I think. Got him. That is a dink. Man, that rod tip is really sensitive and I'll tell you why. Gotta get this guy unhooked. All right, little fella. Okay, we've got two little tiny bluegills so far. Um, the rod tip is really sensitive and it's because it's another solid tip rod. Um, what I mean by that is basically, if you look at that, it's extremely fast and it's a very, very thin rod tip. Now that's the same as the Daiwa Procyon I reviewed, as well as the Dobbin Sierra. I believe it basically means it has a carbon fiber tip, but as you can see, it's extremely thin um, and that has pros and cons. The, the pro is definitely the fact that it's extremely sensitive and it makes it a very fast rod while still maintaining that ultralight power. Um, the con is the fact that, you know, that, that tip has a tendency to get wrapped by line. And if you happen to set the hook with you know, braided fishing line and it has it wrapped, you're going to snap your tip. Again, I ultimately don't think that's necessarily a risk if you're using monofilament or fluorocarbon, but if you're using braided fishing line, it could be something to consider. As far as what model I got and then the specs, this is the six foot one model, ultra light, obviously, rated for one thirty second through one eighth ounce lures and then line one to four pound test. I've got two pound monofilament on here right now. There's one. Man, there's just a bunch of dinky gills right here. That one's bigger than the last couple though. There you go. We're catching some gills, at least we're on the board. I'm currently just using a 164th ounce mule jig with a horsefly. I'll probably re-rig in a second, but I'm gonna catch a couple more gills because they're throttling this thing. Another small one, but I'll take it. This rod does just fine with the light stuff. Um, I will say the biggest reason that I'm able to cast well though is really the monofilament line being two pound test. As I've talked about a lot in the past, you know, your line diameter makes a major difference as far as casting distance goes. Um, this rod is obviously pretty darn fast. It's not very whippy. So, you know, if I wasn't using this low diameter line, it may have a harder time casting some of this really small stuff. But all in all, as long as you're pairing it up with the line recommendations they have on the rod, you should be in great shape. Look at the rod bend right there. That's extremely cool, right? That's a very unique style of rod. And as mentioned, we've seen it before and we'll probably see it again in the future, but that is what a solid tip does for you. And you really think about the benefits of something like this, and that's really just to drive home the hook on a jig. When you're fishing these little jigs like this, and you have a nice fast tip like that, 
that gives you the ability to set the hook and control the fish from the start. If you've got too whippy of a rod, it makes it a lot harder to move that line and get a good hook set. It also makes it a little bit harder to detect bites um, because your rod's always whipping on the retrieve. Like this fish right here, this is a really small bluegill, but I noticed this fish because my rod is so stout and so fast. Um, I would have never noticed this fish on something that's really noodly. And now he's under my seat, so that's great. I don't actually know where this fish is. Oh, there he is. See ya, buddy. You know, if you catch bigger fish, you usually don't lose them in your kayak. Man, that was a great little bite. Hey, a little crappie. All right, cool. Okay, finally on the board with something other than little dinky bluegill. At least we now have a dinky crappie to our name. Man, and again, if it wasn't for that solid tip, I don't know if I would have felt that bite. Got him. See, I, I just let that fish hook himself. I didn't even set the hook. I just reeled it to set the hook. Just a bunch of dinky gills, man. As I've mentioned several times, you know, this rod reminds me a lot of the Dobbins. This is the Dobbins right here. You can obviously see there are some differences. If you'd like me to do a video in the future showcasing these rods head to head, um, please do let me know. Because this rod right here, I actually picked it up for $170, which is about the same price as the Dobbins. Um, I don't know exactly what you might find the Kage for in your area. I believe they're anywhere from like $160 to $200. Obviously, it's a pretty high-end stick. As much as I'm having fun with these bluegill, and I know I could catch about a thousand of them on this 164 ounce mule jig, we're gonna change it up just for fun. We've only got so much time today, might as well mix it up. We're gonna go with a 116 ounce workhorse jig in the chartreuse color. I'm gonna put a Donkey Tail Junior on there um, to just kind of give a little bit of vibration. Obviously the Donkey Tail Junior has a boot tail, so it just gives it some kick. I'm gonna go all chartreuse. Put that right up in that shade line. And, oh, there you go. It's actually a green sunfish uh, bluegill hybrid right there. Another small fish, but slightly different species. <laughs> I literally saw this bluegill shoot out of there and come smash this thing. There we go, what's this? What's this? That's a little bit better one. Not exactly big, but definitely bigger than the last several. I think that's another hybrid actually. Its mouth is really big. There you go. I believe that's a green sunfish bluegill hybrid. As far as the aesthetics go, I don't think they skimped in any way. I really, really like the cork on this. Really comfortable. You can tell it's high quality. A little narrow, I would say, but not, not necessarily bad. Just a little narrow for someone with a little bit larger hands, but that's a pretty common thing. I do like the way they screw in the reel seat. It's from the bottom, and you screw it in, and uh, it really tightens down well, but it just gives you a really comfortable grip on it. Um, it's not too short. A lot of times, these ultralight rods try to be so dang minimalist that they end up being too short, and this is actually actually relatively comfortable on the palm. So I really do like this reel seat and I really just like the rod butt in general. Um, I wouldn't be mad if they would have just made it a full rod butt, but I'm a little old school. I like a full cork butt. I don't have any issues with that. Split grip is fine. It looks cool. I think a lot of people really like split grip, but for me, I wouldn't have necessarily been mad if they would have made it a full butt. Um, it does have a hook keeper right above the reel. I like this style of hook keeper. It doesn't do as well with like a drop shot, but it does great with everything else. The other thing is it is closed so your line is never going to hook around that sometimes rod companies put a little hook keeper above this but it's some kind of little loop and then the line wraps around it and that could potentially damage your line and it also messes with you when you're trying to retrieve your lure so i really think they nailed it as far as aesthetics goes and just basically the the little hook keeper right there i know these are small details but to me when you're going to spend close to 200 dollars, small details make a big difference All right, what is this? That was a weird bite. Holy smokes, that's a giant. That's a big white perch is what that is. Probably the biggest white perch of my life. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's huge. I'll try to get away from this swimming dock and come back and fish it hard because there's probably more fish. I wanna measure this fish. I, I honestly think this is a big white perch. 10 and three quarter inch white perch, which I believe is pretty big. I'm gonna look it up online in a second but he wanted that workhorse jig, man. He crushed it. That's a nice white perch right there. 
kind of a strange fish. You know, I grew up catching white bass a lot. Um, white perch looks similar to them, but definitely a little different. Almost looks like uh, one of those like Australian bass. Crazy little fish, but uh, 10 and 3 quarter inches. Let's look up online if that's a big one. I'm gonna do that real quick. I got, they're kind of slimy. I got a little slime on my fingers. I don't even know if they have white perch on here. We'll see. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I just caught a master angler. Holy smokes. I thought that looked big. A master angler white perch is 10 inches. That was 10 and 3 quarter inches. I destroyed that master angler. I thought it looked big and I was like, this is like, it looks like a big fish, but I didn't know if I was tripping because I just don't know very much about white perch. But yeah, that was a donkey. That's freaking awesome. That's cool. Uh, I'm not going to fill out an application because I'm not that worried about it, but it is cool. I've caught two master anglers this year, bluegill and white perch. The question is, can we catch any more by the time the year's through? I honestly think it would not surprise me at all to catch a master angler crappie because I don't think that's that hard. A 14 inch crappie is something I've done in the past and I know I'll do it again, um, but it's kind of cool. I've caught two master anglers this year. That's pretty solid. So anyways, I'm going to get back to fishing. Today has been fun. This Daiwa Kage is crushing it and uh, you know, it's very similar to the Dobbins as I mentioned, and you guys know I love my Dobbins, so I definitely love this rod as well. I really like the comfort of it. It's really, it's just a nice rod to fish with, but it's so sensitive. It's got that solid tip, so it's wonderful for jig fishing. Everything about this rod is great for my style of angling. I think I'm just gonna play it safe. Even though I don't see any nicks in my line, I'm gonna go ahead and retie this two pound test. I've broken my line a few too many times this year, and so I wanna just start getting more disciplined about snipping my line and just doing a retie. There's got to be more fish around this thing. It's so weird. I just caught that one random white perch right there. Oh, one definitely bit it because my line stopped sinking and we're sitting in close to nine foot of water. Got him. There's a crappie. That's more like what I expected. Makes sense. Crappie should be under this dock. Come on, give me another crappie here. There's a bite. He's got it. Another crappie. There you go. There you go, my friends. Couple little small crappie here. At this point, I'll take anything because like I said, I have a pretty short fishing trip. I'm not gonna be able to stay out here a whole lot longer. So I'm just gonna make the most of my time and catch as many fish as I can. There's bite right there. That was a little tiny bluegill probably grabbing the tail. Good old dock shoot, baby. There he is. He was carrying that thing. I should have known he had it a long time ago. I thought I had a bite and I was kind of being patient, trying to see if he'd take it down. And what do you know, a little dinky crappie. Pretty fish though. It's funny how these crappie are all congregating in this one little spot just because of the shade. Now, if I could just find a bigger one, one's carrying it, but I don't think he's very big. Yeah, it's another long skinny crappie. See this, some of these long skinny ones look to me like they're white crappie. I don't know, it's so hard to tell at times. There's another. See, this looks like a white crappie to me. This looks like a white crappie to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Eh, how many dorsal spines do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Five dorsal spines, I'm getting a bite. And literally right underneath my kayak, I was getting a bite. Five dorsal spines, what does that make it? Oh, look at its tail, it's all grody. Ew, see you, buddy. Little bit better slabby, but not very big. See, this one's not as long and skinny though. This one looks like a more standard crappie. I don't know why some of them are so long and skinny. That one looks like a standard old black crappie to me. Well, I know I haven't caught any real giants today, but at least we've been catching a lot of fish. And the other thing is, hopefully you're seeing that this truly is a high performance stick right here. It's so dang sensitive and I've had a lot of light biters, a lot of really small bites and I've been able to land them. So that's a definite difference maker when it comes to higher performance ultralights. I don't think you need to spend $200 on an ultralight rod to catch fish. Um, it's all a matter of personal preference and personal budgets. I think you can have a lot of fun for $30 to $50, but for close to $200, this is definitely a pretty sick rod right here. Crappie out here. I saw something suspended way out here, just offshore. I saw like a group of bait fish and then some fish suspended and it's another little crappie. And look, it's got that same thing on his tail. It looks so gross. I'm gonna have to take a picture of that and see if I can get a, if someone can tell me what that is. Ah! Hopefully I don't catch it from this fish. Hopefully it's not the next big virus. 
Crappie's got warts, man. He's nasty. See ya, buddy. See if anybody's under this swimming dock. Another crappie. Man, I'm smashing the slabs today. And when I say slabs, I mean really, really, really small crappie. But hey, I'm catching a lot of them. Oh my gosh, impressive. Dinky gill. Pretty hard to believe I haven't caught a single bass yet. I kind of feel like I can't leave until I catch a bass. I also want to give a huge shout out to my wife. You know, I actually was not planning on fishing today, but she encouraged me to come down and fish. So folks, if it wasn't for my wonderful wife, Jocelyn, this video probably would not be happening right now. So give her a thank you in the comments if you're enjoying today's video. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I just dipped this under there. I was just talking about how I haven't caught a bass yet. Well, I literally was vertically jigging this behind me under the swimming dock, and then this guy shows up. All right, let's scoop this guy up. There you go, decent little bass. There you go, he's long and skinny, that's for sure. That was kind of a weird bite. I was like passing the dock and I was just leaving my jig down there just to see if there was anything left. And uh, this little buddy right here decided he wanted to play. Thanks, buddy. See you later. Well, for only being out here like 90 minutes, I gotta say, we had a fun time. Uh, the Daiwa Kage is obviously a very nice rod. I would highly recommend it for people that are going to use like one to four pound test. If you're gonna use braid, I would probably go for a standard rod tip, not the, the solid tip, because that solid tip is just so thin. And in my experience, that can lead to problems. You know, as, as you might've seen in the past, I did break my Dobbins at one point, and it was totally my own fault, but it was because I was using braid. So I would say this rod right here, if you like mono and you like fluoro, great stick. If you like jig fishing, great stick. Probably not the most versatile stick in the world. I don't think I would really personally like it for little crankbaits and spinners and that sort of thing. But for me, because I fish so many jigs, this is an awesome rod for me. Anyways, if you want to see me fish this head to head with the Dobbins in the future, make sure to comment below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you next time. How about a little bonus? Let's throw around a whopper plopper. And if that doesn't work, let's throw around a jig. We're going to fish for like 10 more minutes. We're going to hopefully catch a nice bass. Oh my gosh, how did you miss? Old strategy of mine. He missed so close to the kayak, I'm not gonna be able to get that fish to come back after topwater, but maybe he'll come for the jig. That got my heart beating a little bit. That was awesome. Can't believe he didn't come back and eat the jig, honestly. Oh, there's one. That wasn't near as exciting of a bite, but at least I got this fish. It's actually a pretty nice one too. Yeah, I'm just winching him in. He's not fighting at all. Respectable fish, but he didn't fight. He's so skinny. Buddy, both the bass I caught today have been so skinny. Looks like me, my freshman year of high school, man. I was like six foot two, 130 pounds. This bass needs to eat something. Go on now.